Hi there, I'm Christine Dunbar from speechmodification.com and this is my smart American accent training. In this video, we'll look at how to pronounce collapse, collapsed, and collapsed in. We'll talk about the pronunciation, how these words change depending on where they're used in a sentence, the syllable stress, the vowel sounds. So let's break it down for you. In the word collapse, our stress is on the second syllable, lapse. And uh, even though we have an SE here, the E is silent in collapse, and uh, we just ha have the A and P and S sounds in this word. Um, because the first syllable is unstressed, letter O is going to say the schwa or a uh sound. It's going to be really short. And one way that you can get that vowel correct, um, get the rhythm of the word and the vowel sounds correct, is by starting on the stressed syllable, lapse, then add your first unstressed syllable back. That sounds like lapse, collapse. Sometimes I even write it like this, collapse, with no vowel here. So you can really think about that first part being short. When we see the letters C-O or C-O-L, we might think collapse or collapse. We might wanna use a true clear vowel there and you really want it to be very short and reduced collapse. That's why starting with laps can be helpful. Laps, collapse. Um, uh, and then when we get to collapsed, because collapse ends with the s sound, when we add letters ed, they simply say the t sound. So this is true for all past tense verbs when we're putting the letters ed on. If it ends with a voiceless sound like a s or a f or a p, we're going to make the letters ed just say t because uh, we we can't turn the voice on. It's a little too challenging there. Uh, that's just the rule and the pattern. If you'd like to learn more about how we say past tense and the different ways we pronounce ed, you can check out my videos for that. I also cover that in my American Accent six-week course where we look at pronunciation patterns for grammar. Um, so you can check that out on our website, speechmodification.com. So. Uh, short version is moving from collapse to collapsed we just add the t sound if you find this challenging and many people do to do this many consonants at the end try doing it adding one consonant at a time so we'll just focus on the second syllable try saying lap laps lapsed lapsed um, so it is p -s and t all together pst, lapsed uh, it does actually sound like something we say, um, <laughs> we say pst if we want somebody's attention. Um, so you can practice that by itself, um, then make sure you can put it on lapsed and collapsed. Same pronunciation for the first part of the word, we just have that short little schwa, so you can think about it this way, collapse, collapsed. But when we use this in a sentence, how we pronounce that final T depends on what comes after. So if I'm saying I collapsed, I'm just going to say the p -s -t, just like that. But I collapsed into the chair, or I collapsed in exhaustion, collapsed in. As we link the T to the final, uh, to the next vowel sound, it follows the same rules as a regular T does. So if I'm saying something like get it or got it, I don't say get it or get it. This changes to a flap sound and it sounds like get it, got it, or collapsed it, collapsed in. So again, you can think about one way to make that a little easier is if it's challenging for you to do all those sounds, think about it's being the same as collapse and then my d sound goes on to the next word, collapsed in, collapsed in. So we have this flap here connecting to the next vowel. Um, if I'm saying I collapsed that, if my next word starts with a consonant, um, we might either say the T to be really clear, I collapsed that already, or it gets a little bit swallowed, like a stopped unreleased T, I collapsed that, I collapsed that last week. The danger there is it sounds pretty much just like I'm saying collapse. So you may, if you're really trying to emphasize and make sure it's clear you're using past tense, that breaks the sentence a little, collapsed some, collapsed some chairs, collapsed that. If the second way I did it, I didn't let that T out. 
and I'm just making my S sound very short to mark a uh, stopped or unreleased T. Again, you can get more details for how we say the T at the ends of words and how we link those T's in my videos for that. I also talk about that in my American Accent six week course and in my Sounds of English course where I walk through all of the different sounds of English. So some of our sounds obviously like the T's are different in the start, the middle, and the ends of words. And it depends on what word it's in, what uh, sounds come after it. So learning some of those patterns and rules is one of the areas where um, it's not always key to be 100% um, correct in pronunciation. It has more to do with our typical fluent speech, but it can be really helpful in terms of um, making yourself well understood and understanding what you're hearing around you. Um, if you're working hard to put the T on collapsed um, and you find that when you say collapsed that um, it's hard to do and you're not hearing this, these T's or these ED sounds from native speakers, if you understand why and what patterns we use, it can be really helpful in alleviating some of that um, frustration when it comes to some of the more advanced elements of pronunciation and how it integrates with fluent speech. This is something we cover often in our Saturday live classes, looking at reductions, linking, and connected sounds, and we'll be doing that this coming Saturday as well. Our live question and answer class is on Saturdays at 9.15 Seattle time, 12.15 uh, Eastern time here in the US. You can also watch it later on and leave your questions in comments. So if you can't attend live to ask questions, you can still leave comments on that video or any of my videos. Um, and I will cover your words in a future word of the day class or bring it up for a topic in our Saturday live classes. Thanks so much for watching this video, for your requests and suggestions, for liking and sharing. All of those things help the channel to grow and I truly appreciate your support. And a special shout out to those of you who have subscribed to the channel and our channel members. Thanks so much for being part of the channel. I'll be back again tomorrow with another word of the day and I hope to see you there. I'm Christine Dunbar from speechmodification.com. Remember, if you want to sound like a native speaker, you can do it. speechmodification.com. Bye everyone. Hope to see you again soon.